Welcome to Across the Balkans. Great to have you with us on the show. I'm Nafisa Latic. Kosovo's Prime Minister Albin Kurti has rejected the creation of an association of Serb municipalities in his country's north. The proposal was one of the articles in a French-German deal that aims to normalize relations between the two neighbors. Earlier this month, the EU envoy Miroslav Lajčak said if one side refuses to agree, the international community will respond accordingly. With his country risking isolation by the West, Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic has expressed the possibility of compromise. Let's take a closer look how the situation unfolded. For more than a decade, Kosovo-Serbia relations have been on a knife's edge. And it seems temporary solutions may only be delaying the inevitable. The latest meeting was held on January 20th. The US, EU, Italian, German and French envoys met with Serbian and Kosovo leaders to sign a new deal. This time, the mediators were more determined than ever to end tensions. In an interview, EU envoy Miroslav Lajic stated that in case a side refuses to agree, the international community will make its position known. This means the West will politically and economically isolate the one that disagrees. So what is the German-French proposal? The leaked document consists of 10 articles, and these are perhaps the most crucial parts. First, there is no proposal for Belgrade to recognize Kosovo, which has drawn criticism from Pristina. Marvesia do ta ket nyo hien reciproke me cender, sepse vetem asesoi e boim normalizimine pliot raporteve medis Kosovos. The sides have to open liaison offices in Pristina and Belgrade. These permanent missions will aim to solve unsettled issues. Belgrade has to stop blocking Pristina from entering international institutions, which Vucic seems willing to accommodate. An association of Serb municipalities are also to be established in North Kosovo. A self-governance plan for Serb-majority municipalities in Kosovo was first proposed in 2013, but never came to fruition. About 50,000 Serbs live in northern Kosovo. They refuse to recognize Pristina, so tensions often shake the region. The U.S. hence backs the call for the association. Following talks with Kosovo's Prime Minister, Albin Kurti, the Council of the Department of State tweeted that its establishment is vital for the negotiations. Risking critical support, lately, Prime Minister Kurti rejected the creation of a similar association, but he said he is willing to speak about the country's minority rights. As his country faces international isolation, Vucic has expressed the possibility of compromise. Dakle, Serbia mora da razgovara. Serbia mora da učestvuje u dialogu. Serbia mora da nastavi svoj evropski put. Ne zato što obožavam njihovo licemerje po pitanju poštovanja povelje Ujedinjenih nacija i rezolucije Ujedinjenih nacija. Već zato što bismo bili ekonomski i politički izgubljeni bez toga. During a meeting with his Serbian counterpart, Turkey's foreign minister also voiced Ankara's support for the talks. Belgrad Pristina diyalog sürecini e, biz Türkiye olarak destekliyoruz. Hem de güçlü bir şekilde e, destekliyoruz ve bu sorunların diyalog yoluyla e, çözülmesini e, arz ediyoruz. The process is also being praised by the US. And the president made very clear that uh, Europe is Serbia's future. Uh, I want to be very clear that the U.S. very much supports this future. The French-German deal hasn't been agreed to yet. It's still being shaped. However, it has created a foundation for discussions. Many are wondering if the cost will be higher for Vucic or Kurti, and which leader will take the West's message more seriously. But the big question is, will the French-German proposal succeed in building the first steps towards normalizing ties? Let's go to our panel to get more on this topic. From Belgrade, we have Stevan Gajic. He's a political scientist and a research associate at the Institute of European Studies. And in Pristina, we have Dan Ilazi. He is the head of research at the Kosovar Center for Security Studies. Dan, Stevan, great to have you both with us. Dan, let me start with you. Albin Kurti rejected yep. the EU proposal. So, so what happens now? 
it's not clear if he if he rejected uh, the proposal. I think the position it's more uh, or his rejection, if it can be uh, 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 like that, is about the uh, establishment of association of sub majority municipalities. What I can tell is that his position is uh, that there shouldn't be a uh, association that it's only for one ethnicity, but it should be an association that it's uh, compatible with the character of Kosovo as a multi-ethnic state. However, I think that uh, this position is not in accordance with the legal framework in Kosovo and the obligations that Kosovo has from the uh, Brussels dialogue or the EU facilitated dialogue. Uh, the establishment of the Association of Serb Majority Municipalities is an obligation that Kosovo assumed uh, in 2013 uh, with the agreement that was signed in Brussels and that was voted in the Kosovo Assembly by two thirds of its members. And this has become now part of the legal framework of Kosovo and the government should should form it. Uh, I think this is a major and now uh, point but of contention. But if I understand well, uh, what Kurti wants to avoid is having something like Republika Srpska in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I think he said that uh, several times. So yes. can we expect that the EU uh, actually change this in the draft plan in the future? So the position, uh, and recently we had uh, two senior U.S. officials write an opinion piece for a Kosovo media, and no one is asking Kosovo to establish the association of Serb majority municipalities in a way that would contradict the constitution. Uh, there is a decision by our constitutional court in 2015 about this association, uh, and uh, what the request is that the Kosovo establish the association in accordance with this decision. So no one wants another Republika Srpska. I think there's fears, uh, rational fears about, about that. Uh, but I don't think that those fears are valid for Kosovo. We have a different system of organization, and I don't think there is any fear that the Serb uh, Association or Community of Serb Majority Municipalities would be another Republika Srpska, but that is correct. The Prime Minister right. of Kosovo is concerned about that scenario, yeah. Uh, Stevan, uh, is the creation of Kosovo municipalities with an ethnic Serbian majority the only way to resolve tensions when it comes to Belgrade? I think the only way uh, to resolve tensions is to uh, get rid of the Franco-German plan altogether. Uh, it contradicts the constitution of Serbia uh, because uh, uh, it presumes that Serbia is supposed to uh, accept uh, uh, the recognition, basically, of the illegal secession of Kosovo and Metohija from uh, Serbia. But the plan never mentions uh, mutual recognition. Uh, the draft not, that we are seeing right now, it doesn't mention the recognition by any sides. It does not, but it implies that Serbia should not oppose uh, Kosovo as an independent state joining the United Nations, which is unacceptable for the overwhelming majority of people in Serbia. It is uh, unacceptable for the Serbian Orthodox Church. And uh, I think it is absolutely unrealistic. And also, the EU is not a re reliable partner. Recently, we had uh, Hollande and Angela Merkel, so President of France and, and uh, Chancellor of Germany, saying that they uh, tricked Russia back in 2014 and 15 uh, with the with the Minsk agreements. Uh, we see uh, what is happening now with the agreement between North Macedonia and Bulgaria. So how can the EU be a reliable partner if uh, it was unable to implement the but agreement? But Stevan, that... Alexander Vucic openly said that the EU is priority and that he will consider this plan as the EU puts this. Uh, this is the new condition for Serbia's integration into, into the bloc. Yes, under the presumption that Serbs want to be integrated in the EU. Uh, maybe this is a priority for Vucic, but uh, when you look at all the all the uh, polls, uh, the en enthusiasm for European Union uh, in Serbia is gone. And it is gone for a, for a good reason, because there is quite a large a feeling of fatigue among the Serbian uh, citizens about joining the EU. And now we can see that uh, the EU is uh, a... a, a let's say, association of countries that uh, has lost a lot of its credibility and also a lot of its powers. Uh, Paris and, uh, and, and Berlin are constantly being conditioned by Washington and London and even by Warsaw and Kiev. Uh, the re most recent uh, uh, thing is the this whole uh, thing with the Leopard 2 tanks being sent to Ukraine. Uh, so how uh, can we be... Uh, uh, 
you know, consider joining uh, this association if uh, it is not uh, even attractive anymore. So right, but I I do have to uh, jump in here. But in that, then the you know the warnings from the EU and the US are quite strong. Then Serbia is heading towards isolation, and not just Serbia, Kosovo as well. If they reject this plan yeah, again. Mr. Mr. Biltrick had this quite, uh, I would say, uh, quite a, a racist statement saying that Serbia uh, sh uh, will be Iran of Europe. Uh, I don't know why didn't he compare us to Israel. Israel is more isolated than Iran, uh, which has plenty of friends uh, in its region. Uh, and Serbia, uh, quite frankly, has uh, has options. Uh, there are uh, great uh, relations that we have with uh, both uh, China, Russia, Middle Eastern states, especially United Arab Emirates, uh, with Iranians, Saudis, and Israelis. So uh, the uh, you know Serbia has other uh, geopolitical options, and it has friends around the world. So right. EU then, is not international uh, community. Uh, yes, yeah. I understand uh, your point, uh, Stevan. Then so. But what options Kosovo has? Uh, you know, many call Kosovo the most pro-American country um, in Europe, and they want yeah. to keep uh, this relationship with the U.S. I think this year is a year of opportunity, and if Kosovo and Serbia do not seize the opportunity, uh, there will be serious consequences for for the both countries, but the entire region. And isolation is is one of them. I think the EU cannot understand uh, any longer or does not have the patience for, for these two countries to deal uh, with these nationalistic uh, and <laughs> radical uh, nationalistic approaches to something that should have been solved uh, long ago. Both countries uh, have uh, aspired to become members of the European Union. Both countries have signed stabilization association agreements with the EU, recognizing uh, each other's uh, uh, obligations. And so both have a separate path towards the EU, and we cannot just keep the entire region uh, hostage to our nationalistic uh, ideals and, and, and goals. The region right, and more is and more European leaders are saying lately, uh, we mentioned just uh, Giorgia Meloni briefly uh, from yeah. Italy, They're, they keep saying that the Balkans is strategic uh, area and the region of Europe in this time uh, of Russia's attack on Ukraine. Stevan, so if you say uh, there are many people who think like you, as you stated just now, that this plan is not going to work for Serbia. So what then? We can't keep having uh, these escalations in the north of Kosovo. Both sides, Serbs and Albanians, are suffering at this point. Uh, yes, but Serbs never escalated. Uh, I mean, only recently there were several attacks. Uh, on the 6th of January, two Serbian boys were, were shot. Thank God that they did not die. Uh, uh, and it was uh, an ethnically motivated attack. Uh, then again, the following day, uh, a Serbian young man uh, was beaten after uh, coming from uh, from the church. Uh, and uh, the Kosovo government uh, <clears throat> is expropriating more than 100 acres of uh, land uh, th that is owned by the Serbs. I mean, all of these uh, moves are uh, really uh, apartheid motivated, uh, I would say, crimes against the Serbs. Uh, which are happening constantly. So Serbs are not the ones who are who are escalating, and they don't want to escalate. And nobody wants uh, uh, tensions or any kind of hostilities. But Serbia cannot uh, really uh, undermine its own constitution and undermine international law. I would, uh, would like to remind you that according to the UN Resolution 1244, uh, Kosovo and Metohija are the integral part of Serbia. And we cannot just forget about it because uh, the NATO has some really urgent uh, geopolitical needs. Also, it is very hypocritical that at the same time the EU is insisting on the territorial integrity of Ukraine while it is forcing Serbia to violate, violate its territorial integrity. And not only that, it is also uh, asking from Serbia to implement sanctions against Russia, which is uh, uh Serbia's most partner in the in the Security Council of the United Nations. So Ste this is really absurd. Uh, Stevan, yes, but many countries around the world and international institutions do recognize Kosovo, and this is the reality that we need to work with so, so we can de-escalate the situation in the Balkans that might impact other countries as well as Bosnia and Montenegro. Then your final thoughts. I have 20 seconds left for you. Where is this heading? I think uh, there's just uh, uh, an option. I, uh, all the crises, the tensions that were mentioned show how important it is 
uh, for a sustainable resolution of dispute between Kosovo and Serbia. There is a verdict by International Court of Justice from 2010 that says Declaration of Independence by Kosovo did not violate any international law. Resolution 1244 never mentions sovereignty of Serbia over Kosovo and Metohija, mentions uh, uh, Yugoslavia. So, uh, and this resolution also calls for a, a, a final settlement of the political status and Declaration of Independence of Kosovo was done on the basis of recommendation of an envoy assigned by United Nations in accordance with this resolution. So the plan is clear, the solutions are clear, there needs to be political will to implement those, and I appeal both to uh, Serbia and Kosovo leadership to accept the solutions offered by the EU and the US who are now working together on this, because simply we have a real war in Ukraine and the EU doesn't have, or the US, the patience with us to deal with this uh, constant uh, uh, bickering. We need a sustainable solution and we need uh, a region of Western Balkans that is moving in the direction of the European integration. And the only way to do that is for them to solve the disputes we have in a manner that is a European way and not a nationalistic uh, and xenophobic. Uh, Stefan, uh, Dan, unfortunately, I don't have any more time. Thank you both for being our guest. Thank you. Let's look at other stories making headlines in the region this week. The European Union and the United States have welcomed the Bosnia and Herzegovina's newly formed state-level government. Borja Krišto from the Croatian Democratic Union was elected as the new chairperson of the Council of Ministers. EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell congratulated Borjana, saying he is looking forward to more progress on the EU agenda. The U.S. ambassador to Sarajevo also voiced his support for Bosnia's integration into Euro-Atlantic institutions. For the first time, Bosnia's largest political party, Democratic Action, will not be included in the new government. During talks with his Serbian counterpart Ivica Dacic in Ankara last week, Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu reiterated that cooperation between the two countries is at the highest level. He said Turkish investments in Serbia are on the rise and Turkey is now restoring the Bayrakli Mosque in the country's capital. Cavusoglu also added there will be soon direct flights between Belgrade and Izmir. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni has urged the European Union to prioritize its enlargement process in the Western Balkans. She said the region cannot stay outside the common European home for long, calling the Western Balkans a strategic part of the continent. Meloni also called on the EU to build a new vision for the Balkan region, including cooperation in the fight against corruption, illegal migration and radicalism in all forms. As we mentioned, joining the EU remains the top priority for the Western Balkans. But there is one country whose EU membership is on the brink of suspension. Once a frontrunner to joining the bloc, Montenegro is now being warned by the European Union and some of its members. Last week, Slovenian Foreign Minister Tanja Fajon once again urged Montenegro on behalf of the EU to appoint judges in its constitutional court by February so that elections in March can go ahead. Otherwise, the bloc would consider stalling Montenegro's accession talks. Mirjana Miladinović unpacks the situation from Podgorica. Montenegro was once a leader in the Western Balkans on the path to joining the European Union. Today, it's come to a point where EU officials are discussing whether to end the negotiations due to the country's deepening political and institutional crisis. At a recent meeting of the EU Council for Foreign Affairs, Montenegro was on the agenda and, once again, on the receiving end of some harsh words. Črna Gora ostaje na taka rak rana iz države, ki je bila najbolj uspešna na poti Evropsko unijo, zdaj v državo, ki postaja problem. Montenegro became a problem after its second government in as many years lost a confidence vote last August. And the current majority has since been unable to form a new government. President Milo Đukanović has now called for extraordinary parliamentary and presidential elections for March. But neither can go ahead without a constitutional court, and right now Montenegro doesn't have one. The current 41-seat majority falls short for the two-thirds needed to elect the judges. This means that those in power and the opposition must come to an agreement. But no deal has been reached, despite a vote that has now been held 
five times, and a lot is now at stake. Vsi po svojih kanalih se pač pogovarjamo s predstavniki političnih strank tam in sporočamo, da je to šesti poskus in da šesti poskus mora uspeti. Sicer bo Črna Gora skrenila za evropske poti. But both the government and the opposition still see things differently. The parliamentary majority is confident of an agreement, having done everything to make Montenegro progress towards the EU since taking power in 2020. But the opposition says the authorities' main goal is the exact opposite, to distance Montenegro from the EU as much as possible. Speaking to Across the Balkans, the president of the Assembly says that messages from the EU are taken seriously. Nisu u pitanju samo poruke koje dobijamo strane Evropske unije i drugih međunarodnih adresa, već sama činjenica da u Crnoj Gori definitivno je i tekako neophodno da sve institucije sistema potpunosti funkcionišu, a prva i osnovna koja nam nedostaje jeste Ustavni sud. Đurović je konvinsen da je agrementa koji će biti učiniti u ovom tijem i da Montenegro će učiniti od krizisa. Ali opozicija nije tako sviđa. It accuses the majority of nominating candidates it considers unacceptable and in so doing blocking the country's European path. Stotinama i stotinama puta ponovljen naš stav. Ajmo da se dogovorimo, ajmo da izaberemo sudije Ustavnog suda. Međutim, kandidatima sigurno neće biti kandidata koje bismo mi odmah izabrali, ali naravno uz kompromis i uz dogovor spremni smo na sve. Međutim, paradoks je da oni koji čine vlast i da oni koji su našu državu uveli u jednu ozbiljnu krizu ne žele taj dogovor. February is when the parliament will hold a sixth round of voting to elect the judges. If it fails, Montenegro's negotiations may be suspended along with a host of other concessions. We call it political dialogue. Unfortunately, it is very open political trade. And uh, we are hostages of that trade as a citizen. It is not only accession talk, it is a potential risk of uh, losing uh, pre-accession uh, funds, uh, risk of uh, visa liberalization regime, uh, risk of losing some uh, credit of European banks for some infrastructural projects, and uh, a lot of other things related to supporting civil society, political dialogue, uh, media freedom, and everything what we desperately need in Montenegro. The opposition says a potential halting of Montenegro's EU negotiations may have serious consequences for the region. Prije svega mislim na, na Makedoniju, na Kosovo, na Bosnu i Hercegovinu, zato što se šalje jedna poruka da koliko god napredujete u tom procesu, pa makar stigli i do završnog cilja, odnosno predzavršni cilj koji, koji predstavlja članstvo, samo članstvo u EU, da u svakom trenutku se taj proces u ovom, u ovom nestabilnom regionu može zaustaviti. On the other hand, some also believe that Serbia is expanding its influence in Montenegro to deepen the crisis and use it to better position itself in Brussels. President Vučić said that uh, he fixed that uh, nobody will uh, join EU before Serbia. And for him it was, you know, successful result of his policy. So it means that uh, we have uh, somehow neighbors really focused on uh, avoiding that Montenegro should be some kind of leader anymore and uh, should be before Serbia. Montenegro did previously have the chance to leave the so-called Balkan convoy of countries heading towards Brussels. But that chance is now lost and it's still on the last wagon at the expense of slowing others down. But the parliamentary majority is optimistic about what lies ahead. It believes both Montenegro as well as other countries in the region can and must solve their problems by themselves. Ne mislim da su se predstavnici Evropske unije i međunarodne zajednice kasno uključili i njihova uloga sada je više motivaciona sa te strane. Još uvijek vjerujem da ima apsolutno dovoljno kapaciteta da ovo to pitanje rješimo u okviru same države. As Montenegrins await an agreement between the majority and the opposition, there are also becoming torn in divisions between the East and West, between EU and Russia, which is becoming more visible in society. 
An election seems their only chance to decide which path the state should take. But for now, it's still nowhere in sight. Mirjana Miladinović, The RT World, Podgorica, Montenegro. Before leaving, let's take you to Bosnia and Herzegovina, where a famous river known for its stunning natural beauty has turned into a giant rubbish heap. As we speak, the Drina River has been flooded with debris and trash. Tons of plastic bottles, rusty barrels, used tires and discarded appliances have piled up behind the barrier in the river. Environmental activists complain the barrier installed by a hydroelectric plant has been turned into a waste site and it's considered one of the worst in the world. Recent floods have also pushed a large amount of garbage onto the land. People have been forced from their homes to avoid both the water and heavy flow of trash. Just unbelievable. This river used to be known for its breathtaking scenery. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed our program. See you next time. Bye-bye.